Hi everybody, uh, my name's Kenton. I'm a nutritionist and a research scientist. Um, my speciality is actually weight loss and sports performance. And I'm currently finishing off a PhD in nutrition, physiology and biomechanics. Um, so what I'm gonna to do today is run through health and nutrition. I'm gonna give a general overview uh, with uh, not trying to get into too much depth with regards to facts and figures, but putting together the panacea or the gold standard, and then talking about how we as individuals can try to achieve something like that, but obviously not being able to do that. Um, I'm also going to naturally talk about the um, supplements and nutritional benefits to health, to help eye health, because that's effectively why we're here. Um, I'm going to try to go through some jargon as well, so to bust some jargon, as it were. So when we talk about essential and macronutrients, etc., I want you to gain an understanding of what that actually means. Um, and I've also done a, a little document. It's about 11 pages, a Word document, to run alongside this. So hopefully that will add a little bit more meat on the bones. So if anybody's a little more interested or wants a little bit more information, um, and that would be available to you. Um, and at the end, obviously, we'll go through a Q&A session. So if there's anything that you want me to expand on, or if there's anything that you want to know, um, then just um, let us know. Okay, so what's the best way to help with regards to health and nutrition? So if you go into the internet or look in books, the idea is to eat healthily, to eat whole foods, and to primarily give what we call a balanced diet. So what is a balanced diet? Effectively, what that means is we need a variety of foods in our diet. They talk about the professionals needing to have five different fruits and vegetables, as we all know. We also need dairy products. We need meat. Obviously, if you're a vegetarian, I can talk about that later. There's differences there. Um, and we need pulses and nuts. Now, the idea is the gold standard would be in each meal, three meals a day, to have those exact differentials. So effectively, variety within each meal. Then they also say that in every meal, there should be a variety. So effectively, one meal should be, say, chicken, with regards to the protein source, the end product source. The next meal would be beef. Now, in reality, as we all know, this is very difficult to achieve. First of all, trying to go and find whole foods every day, um, trying to basically cook those foods every day and having the time to actually have three meals a day. So there are ways around this. Of course, the panacea, as I said before, would be to have what we call a whole food diet, just to explain what whole food means in relation to the nutrition um, world, we're talking about foods that are natural, that haven't been processed in any way. Now, the difference between processed food and whole foods, um, a good example would be whole food is an apple and a processed food is applesauce. So effectively, the applesauce has been cooked. Um, you've had sugar added to it, you've had maybe preservatives, um, different spices. So therefore it's processed. It's not a natural product. The problem is lots of foods are processed. And although we would prefer to eat whole foods, first of all, they don't last long. You have mm. to source them every day and they can be expensive. Mm. So what I do as a nutritionist is we do what we call um, food diary. So a client would have an app from me and they would do a food diary to see what they have every day. Now this, this gives a, sorry? Now, now this gives us a good idea of people's diets, individual people's diets. But what it does, it lays a foundation of a diet plan in which we can make small little changes. What I always say to people is, we have the gold standard of this um, whole food diet, organic foods, etc. but this is unachievable. But what is achievable, and I've done this with plenty of clients, 
is to be able to take parts of people's diet, parts of people's lifestyle, and add things in and take things out. So for example, if you're at work all day and you snack on a pack of biscuits or um, a couple of chocolate bars, take out those chocolate bars and add in some fruit. These little changes will make a difference because at the end of the day, the main process of eating food as humans, for us, it's enjoyment, it's a social event. But the reality is, it's to gain nutrients. And we need these nutrients. In the Western diet, sometimes because of the processed foods in which we eat, the nutrients are not available. There's been plenty of studies shown that even people who are classed as obese, which means they're slightly overweight, have had malnutrition, even though theoretically they're eating a lot of food. It's not nutrient dense food. So I would always advocate trying to eat whole foods. But if that's not possible, try to add a few in here and there. And again, if that's not possible, to look at supplement market. Now I'm a big advocate of supplements. Um, I've been, I'm almost 50 and trying to actually have a healthy lifestyle and do the three balanced meals per day, I've probably done a handful of times in my life because of work commitments, family com commitments, et cetera. But what I do find is that basic supplements can help. Now, when I say basic supplements, I'm not talking about um, you know, taking 20 shakes a day into the office. I mean, a vitamin supplement, a mineral supplement, and the thing that I'm particularly interested in, and a lot of research has proven this to be the case, is increasing protein. Now, in the diet, the one thing that is essential, again, as you'll probably hear that term essential, I'll explain that briefly. What essential means is that our bodies cannot synthesize it ourselves. So effectively, it's essential because we need to have it as an external source, i.e. we need to have it as a food source. It's, a, it's an essential food source. And protein, out of the macronutrients, is essential. I probably want to explain what a macronutrient is now. So macronutrients, you may have heard that term, is basically carbohydrates, protein, and fats. It's the big three. Carbohydrates are not actually essential. Although we use them for energy, and it's in bread, it's in sugar, et cetera, et cetera, and our Western diet is made up of probably 40 to 50%, in some cases 70% of carbohydrate, it's not actually essential for the body. Whereas protein and fats are actually essential. And fats, there's a mythology that fats are bad for you. The fact is that Natural fats are very good for you and essential. A prime example would be cholesterol, for example. So cholesterol has this bad image. And if you have cholesterol in obviously excessive amounts, of course, there could be problems with atherosclerosis, which is hardening of the arteries. However, cholesterol is essential for the hormonal system, what we call the endocrine system. So effectively, all your hormones. So without cholesterol, you can't actually function properly. But when cholesterol is in a general meal where there's um, processed foods, there could be interactions with processed foods that result in hydrogenated fats and trans fats. These are the bad fats. Natural fats are very good. Take aside uh, animal fats, something like olive oil, is a very, very, very good fat. So fats are essential, proteins are essential. Therefore, they've done a lot of research into protein. Um, and if you have extra protein in your diet, protein is the building blocks of everything. So every system in the body is breaking down and building up. The body likes to be in balance. We call that homeostasis. And in order to maintain that balance, we need protein. Um, just as an aside, um, protein has been proven now to reduce sarcopenia, 
Sarcopenia is basically, as you get older, your body starts to regress. And if you have 10 grams of protein, that regression is receded. So effectively, what I would suggest is a vitamin supplement and moving on to having a little bit extra protein in the diet. If you're a vegetarian, you can obviously have what we call complementary proteins, which are mixing various plant proteins. And of course, if you're not a vegetarian, an extra bit of chicken, um, a milkshake would, would suffice, okay? So that's the, the basis of the balanced diet. Um, what I would like to, because I'm conscious of the time actually, I rattled on there, sorry. What I'm conscious of is the reason why we're here. So we're here to look at elements that will help in regards to helping with eye health. What I've done, I, I've looked at um, review, review peer papers. So effectively papers that have had evidence that there is some form of basis in using these products to uh, help eye health. We know them all, they're, they're quite straightforward. So the first one would be vitamin C. This is an essential product that we can have. It's a vitamin, it's a water soluble vitamin. So we can have um, re relatively high amounts of it without there have been any uh, adverse consequences. Vitamin E, which is more of an antioxidant, it helps with the immune function. Again, this is all on my um, Word document. So I will explain on the document the best sources for this and what they do. Another one is zinc, important supplement. Uh, Copper, which uh, a lot of people do not realize, but it's actually quite a useful mineral in the body. Again, it's an essential mineral. And cartilinoids. Effectively, what they are are antioxidants. And there's also something you, you may have heard of called beta carotene, which is um, the, the pigment in carrots, in anything orange. Now, your mother would tell you that eating carrots will make you see in the dark. And actually, she's right. <laughs> because uh, effectively, beta carotene is a precursor of vitamin A. And vitamin A helps in vision. The problem with vitamin A, just so that everyone's totally aware, is that it's a fat-soluble vitamin, which basically means that it's not excreted from the body, but stored in the body. So it can become toxic, which then has a negative side effect. However, these levels are very high, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. But just to make everybody aware that fat-soluble vitamins can become toxic. Another uh, carotenoid is lutein and xenanthin. These are antioxidants. And in my paper, I'll explain more about antioxidants and their value. But effectively, what they do is they stop oxidation. So they stop free radicals and they also help with health, and particularly with, with uh, retinal health. So these are products that I would recommend. Now, obviously, we're looking at budgets and, and with um, inflation increasing. There are products out there that have these um, all in one, which they, they class as uh, vision supplements. Now these are very expensive. The thing is, a lot of these uh, products are actually multivitamins. So I would suggest getting a cheap multivitamin and having it twice a day, and you get the vitamin C, the vitamin E, the zinc and the copper. Now the antioxidants, I would source myself on something like Amazon, so you, you get the best um, prices. But I would always shop around because at the end of the day, these aren't expensive supplements, but they will help. Like everything, when you have a nutritional supplement, it will take time to work and it won't regress anything. But what it will do is ensure that you have the optimum nutrition available in order to maintain your eye health. And then obviously, if there's anything hereditary or there's other problems, it won't solve that issue, but at least you know that you're getting 100% of nutrition for eye health. Um, I would say with regards to um, he healthy eating, again, the lifestyle side of things, 
this is something that is on an individual basis. So everybody has a different way of life. Everybody gets up and, and goes to bed at different times. But with regards to trying to live a healthy lifestyle, I think we all know that smoking is a no-no. Unfortunately, alcohol, again, I, I've, I've um, written some information on alcohol. It's not positive for people who want to have a drink, unfortunately. Um, but then the choice is yours. So effectively, the piece of information, the, the document I'm giving you, enables you to have a level of understanding so that you can make choices. So I know you read on the internet and uh, various papers, they will give you certain diets to take, but these are unrealistic. And I think that the basis of understanding a little bit about nutrition and about what's perfect for um, yourself as an individual, you can make the choices yourself then. I do believe that if you tweak your diet slightly, um, then you would have the opportunity to reap the benefits of a healthier lifestyle without having to do anything too dramatic, like become vegetarian or you know, change your diets completely. There are other things that obviously help with your, your nutrition and your circadian rhythm. So effectively, we all know the benefits of sleeping. Sounds silly, but getting enough sleep at night is vital for health and welfare. There are ways we can help that by reducing blue lights during the night, um, leading up to you know, blue lights from your phone, your laptop, et cetera, et cetera. There are certain uh, food stuffs that you can eat which contains a amino acid called tryptophan. So cheese, I know you shouldn't really have that at night. If you have cheese in your latest meal or um, turkey, the, these uh, substances contain, contain tryptophan, which helps melatonin, which helps regulate sleep. There's also a new research available, which talks about maintaining the circadian rhythm. Basically, that means that we have a 24 hour cycle as a human, and we get up and it's normally related to the sun and then we, we go to sleep. As Neolithic people, we relied on waking up when the sun came and going to sleep when the sun um, went down. We have to sort of almost go backwards and look into this again. There's, there's new research showing that if you get up in the morning when the light is rising and you open your eyes, and you get sunlight in your eyes for at least half an hour, that helps to recalculate your body. And it helps to improve your circadian rhythm and get it back to normal stasis. Of course, you don't look directly at the sun, but having that impact, that photogenesis on the eyes, on morning light, it's a certain type of light, will impact the whole of your day. Now, if you can't get it in um, the morning, then midday light is a, a viable option. And that's another way that we can improve our healthy lifestyle. Um, I think that's probably a bit too much. Uh, it's quite a lot of information there. So what I want to do is open it up to the floor. And if there's anything else that people want to need to talk about, or if there's any more questions, is that okay? Yeah. 